It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Someone's got to win. Why not me? I can't describe how much I want it. This is one tough competition. Pressure's good. It means it counts, doesn't it? Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six amateur cooks all want to become a top chef, but only one will get through to the quarter-final. This is one of the toughest rounds. They are serious about this competition. They have got to make a good start right now. Which one of these today will really shine? Which one of these people today will really show us they are a great cook? I want to see people cook with some direction. I don't want to see fingers cross cooking. It never turns out right, never. Welcome to MasterChef. We know you love to cook. Prove to us that you have some cookery acumen. At the end of this round, three of you will be going home. Do yourselves proud. 50 minutes, one dish, let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of today's ingredients, which include duck breast, salmon fillet, sweet potato, noodles, puff pastry, plums, chilli, onion, coriander and vanilla. Adman Andrew wants a new life in the kitchen, but he's worried the pressure may get the better of him. Somehow a pressurised environment in advertising compared to a pressurised environment where something's burning is not quite the same thing. Don't be so nervous. <laughs> that won't help your cooking. No. Tell us why you entered MasterChef. The eventual dream is uh, I'd like something vaguely like Le Manoir, a restaurant with rooms, an urban retreat in the countryside. That's a nice dream. See if I can make it reality. Tell us about your culinary influences. Where do you get your inspiration? My mum, really. My mum was in, born in India. I always was brought up with curries and spices. What do you do now? Fashion design. Start of a new career for you, maybe, Lucy? Hopefully. 28-year-old <laughs> Lucy loves her spicy food and has designs on the title. It means everything to me at the moment. If I do something, I want to be the best at it. Liverpudlian painter and decorator Gary has one love in life and he can't get enough of it. It's food all the time. Wake up and what's going to fill me belly? <laughs> Gary, what are you going to cook for us? Duck with um, a spicy sauce saved on noodles. Where, where's the duck now? Because you had half an hour to go, you've already had it in the pan. I've um, half cooked it and just put it in the oven to set up. Can you see yourself now, instead of being a painter and decorator, professional kitchen, in there with the stove, you love the idea of it? Yeah. In my own kitchen, cooking for people, yes, I can. Ladies and gentlemen, you are halfway there. Martin, you love to cook, but right now you look very, very nervous indeed. Well, I said, uh, as long as I don't get duck, I'll be all right, cooking-wise. And we've got duck, so I'm going to cook the duck. You're Scottish? Yeah. Uh, you must have cooked the salmon before. Yeah, but I don't really like salmon. What's the dream, Martin? <laughs> to get through this round. 36-year-old <laughs> Martin prefers to cook from instinct rather than a recipe. Yeah, I like all sorts, you know, just trying different things. Not, you know, do vegetarian stuff, like a vegetarian pizza, and then put chicken on it. Mum of two, Linda, is leaving nothing to chance and has done her homework. I've been badgering my poor husband to bring a mystery bag of ingredients home now and again from the shops, and so I can get an idea, I can think on my feet. Tell us about why you're here. 
my ultimate dream would be to have a little eatery which is family orientated so the kids aren't fobbed off with chicken nuggets and chips like they seem to get everywhere. Smaller portions of what we eat, and why not? You sound like an evangelist for great food for kids. I am. Oh. Duck's a little bit black. Just a bit. Twenty-five-year-old Mitra is confident she can cook, but is worried about her nerves. I hope I'm calm in the kitchen here. I'll tend to be completely calm until the end, and then I'll completely panic. You haven't got a huge amount of time left, but we've still got raw pastry on our board. Yes, it's about to go in the oven. Um, yeah, so it'll be fine. How far do you think you can go in this competition? All the way, but right now, I just want to get through to the professional kitchen. Right, I must get on. Yeah, you must get on. You're telling us to go, Mitra, are you? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> OK. You've got just five minutes left. Um, weren't you cooking duck? <laughs> yeah. Finish! Time's up. Time's up. Painter and decorator Gary wants to impress with his pan-fried duck with noodles. The real issue for me is how long you cook that duck, Gary. I'm having to chew that for far too long because it's so overcooked. What else do you have to show us, Gary? I've got some unusual dishes to show you. That's an unusual dish and it hasn't really worked very well, has it? No. Lucy is staying true to her Asian roots with hot and sweet salmon and crispy onion. Flavour-wise, it's good. You've got the crispy onion in there, but that's the only texture. It's just a bit baby food-like. Mm -hmm. If I'd got that in a restaurant, I wouldn't send it back, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't order it again. Advertising exec Andrew hopes to go through with his oriental duck on a sweet potato puree. Well-cooked duck breast, the skin could probably be a little bit crispier. From the ingredients you had, I think that's not bad, Andrew, at all. Thank you. It's cooked very, very well indeed. That's not bad. Despite a nervous start, Mitra's produced a sweet plum and custard tart with vanilla cream. The custard is sweet and rich, and then you've got that lovely cream with the vanilla hint at the back of it. Yeah, it works. Mum of two, Linda, hopes her crispy duck with noodles will meet the judge's approval. There are some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Burnt skin and the duck is a bit flabby. Sesame oil, saltiness of a little bit of soy, sweetness of the duck, crunch of the carrot. It's actually not bad. Martin began by cooking duck but changed his mind halfway through. His hopes now rest on pan-fried salmon with sweet potatoes. It's a piece of salmon, some sweet potatoes, which haven't been sautéed but boiled, and a slice of chilli. We don't really have a complete dish. That's all I tend to do. It seems to me there was a lot of energy gone into your duck dish rather than your salmon dish. I'm better than this. <laughs> it's judgment time. You know the rules. Three of you are staying and three of you are going to go home. We're going to ask you to duck out, have yourselves a cup of tea, while we make the decision. Off you go.
We need three from our six. We're looking for a great cook, and we're looking for somebody who has the promise to actually make it as our champion. Can I just tell you who I really like? I like Andrew. That guy understands flavour. That was cooked very well, and that was a very good puree. I like him. The flavours were good. I think Andrew's got promise. Yeah, good, good. Andrew's in. Can we just talk about Martin? Mm. Martin actually cooked two dishes. Both dishes were never going to work. I went in and I had all the ingredients, and my mind went blank, and I thought, what am I doing here? We got salmon and just slices of sweet potato. Uh, no, no, no. Martin's out. Oh, Martin's out. Andrew's in. Can we talk about Gary's cooking? He had that lovely duck breast in a pan with half an hour to go. He just left it in the oven to cook and cook and cook. Home time, Gary. Gary and Martin are gone. Tell us about Mitra. I liked Mitra because she was different. She went for pudding. Yeah, look, it wasn't just because she cooked pudding, John. The plums and the custard, the cream, it tasted great. OK, it was tasty. Let's give it a chance. Andrew and Mitra in, Martin and Gary out, Linda or Lucy. We're looking for somebody who actually does cook. And Lucy chopped, pureed, wrapped things, sautéed, and actually end up with a decent dish. It was just all sweet, all mush, all sweet. My worry is not about whether Lucy is competent, but whether Linda is actually competent. That duck breast put into a really, really hot pan, that soy sauce was going to caramelise, it was going to burn. As soon as it went on, I knew what was happening and I could smell it burning and I was, it was too late to stop that, so I just had to do the best I could with what I'd done. Despite Linda having a couple of mistakes, and they're not big mistakes, her food actually tasted good. Soy, sesame oil, she made a very tasty dish. And I'd like to see more of her cooking. Who's it going to be? Lucy or Linda? Three of you are staying with us, but three of you are going home. Andrew? You're staying with us. Congratulations. Gary? Martin? Sorry, guys. You're leaving us. Congratulations. You're cooking tomorrow. So that leaves us, Linda or Lucy. Sorry, Linda. Congratulations, Lucy. <laughs> 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 Now comes the real challenge. I do everything in my power to win. I'm delighted. I'm just a bit nervous. It was 50-50. I'm just uh, happy that I've got through. Now we're going to turn the heat right up. They're going to get their first taste of the professional kitchen. They get a chance tomorrow to live their dream or their nightmare. Day two, and the contestants arrive at Oaxaca, a popular Mexican restaurant in the heart of London's Covent Garden. Head chef Thomasina Myers is a past MasterChef champion. I don't envy any of you because I remember exactly how I felt in your positions. We normally feed about 200 people on a Friday lunch, um, and that's in the space of an hour and a half. The name of this game is Speed. And that means each of our amateurs will be in charge of not just one dish, but an entire section. Mitra is looking after the tacos and tasting platters. Lucy is in charge of the grill. And across the kitchen, an eager Andrew has five different salad mains to contend with. I just can't wait to get stuck in. Give me, a, give me an order. Let, give me something to cook. He doesn't have long to wait. The 12 o'clock rush begins right on cue. Hey, thank <laughs> Straight away, Mitra learns that in a professional kitchen, portion size is vital. You're cheating all of them. They're paying their money and they're not getting enough food, OK? Yeah. It's not good enough. Lucy, I need three chicken enchiladas, one chorizo quesadilla. Tell me yes, chef. Yes, chef. At the grill, Lucy is inundated with orders. Lucy, listen up. We've got two black beans, two, two bean. chorizo, two, two chicken, two mushroom quesadilla. <laughs> it seems really fast. How 
are those burritos going? And she's not the only one up against it. With the lunch queue stretching out of the door, Mitra's struggling to keep up. Chicken taquito, no salsa. Five Oaxaca selections. Yes, chef. Faster, you've got to go faster than this. have got more orders. Now she's suddenly got five Oaxaca selections on. She's got loads of taquitos to put in. And, and frankly, I think she's struggling. Meanwhile, Andrew's complex salads are going out on time, but he's missing a vital ingredient. That's lacking salt. Did yeah. you put salt in? Uh, yeah, probably not enough. We'll just season it up. I'll get there, I'll get there. That won't happen twice. With the end of service in sight, Lucy looks right at home and is impressing the boss. Chicken, yellow, chorizo, red, beef, black. Oh my God, we've got them all right. <laughs> and even the sous chef is taking note. So how's Lucy coming on? She's picking up pretty well, chef. Are you saying she's in control? Very much. I think I lost control here. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Andrew's salads are now getting the thumbs up. That's really beautifully seasoned. Thank you. Even Mitra is getting her tasting platters out in good time. Nice. Cool. Good work. I've had some stressful moments, but I think I handled it okay. I've had quite a lot of fun. Okay, guys, that's it. Well done. Very good job. End of service. Done brilliantly. After two and a half hours and over 200 orders, lunch finally comes to an end. Andrew was good. He got the hang of the dishes pretty quickly. I thought he was very quick to pick up the dishes. He had to watch the seasoning. That was his one down point. I love that. That was one of the most, don't tell my girlfriend, but some of the, one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. Lucy, I thought, was great. She had a really good eye, I thought, for detail. And she never seemed to panic. I thought she did very well. That was really good, but really busy and really intense, and I've burnt all my fingers. Mitra, out of all of them, showed the least attention to detail from the start. I think she's quite nervous. But I was impressed by the way she immediately started you know, rectifying it. I've never worked in this heat and this, with this amount of people in such small space, and with everyone being able to see us in the restaurant as well. I'm just glad they paid for their food. <laughs> So which of our three amateurs would Thomasina have working beside her in a professional kitchen? I think Lucy should step right in. She's got the job. But there's no time to rest. It's back to MasterChef HQ for the final challenge. Welcome back. Your own two dishes. You've got one hour to cook them in. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's cook. Lucy scraped through the invention test but excelled in the pro kitchen. Can she now put the heat on the competition with her spice-infused food? Wow. There's a lot of ingredients here. What are you making with them? Um, I'm making a grilled prawn and squid hot fruity salad and then a prune and fillet stick curry. It's a little bit east meets west, isn't it? Yeah. I think what it is is I like things that taste spicy but quite sweet. I'm looking forward to it. Good. <laughs> Can you win this competition? Hopefully. <laughs> if you sit on the fence any longer, you'll have splinters up your bum. <laughs> All right. Every time I walk past a bench, I smell and I think, oh, that all smells great. I feel the beef should be seared, pan-fried, and it should be rare inside. It's not a piece of meat that needs to be braised in the curry. So far in the competition, Mitra has struggled with her nerves. Can she now hold it together and produce food worthy of a quarter-final spot? What are you cooking for us? A uh, main course of a grilled sea bass on broad bean and pea salad with some gnocchi. And for dessert, I'm going to do a white chocolate and cardamom syllabub. You're doing a sort of big uh, white chocolate creamy thing? Yeah, it tastes good too. I'm sure it tastes fantastic. You've seen your other two. Are you better than them? Absolutely. Does gnocchi and sea bass go together? Oh, I'm not quite sure. White chocolate syllabub, little chocolate biscuits. Yeah, great. And she's showing skill. You 
just over halfway. 25 minutes left. Andrew impressed the judges in the invention test with his classic flavour combinations, but now he's taking a bolder approach. Andrew, we're going to have two dishes. Yes. What are they? Pan-fried scallops on a bed of celeriac puree with uh, chorizo sausage, followed up by sea bass cooked with uh, pancetta and chestnuts. Where's this come from? This is just something that seemed to make sense. I tried it and I thought it did. What's at stake for you today, Andrew? The chance to actually do something really, really different with my life. Scallops, chorizo, celeriac puree, absolutely fine. Cabbage, coconut milk and chestnuts. I don't know, he's a brave man. You've only got two minutes left. That's it. Time's up. Spice-inspired Lucy has made a salad of grilled king prawns and squid with fruit puree, followed by a prune and fillet steak curry. I doubted the dish, but what I do like is the fruitiness that comes with that spice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Good. Mango and squid. It's a little bit too slippery. Mm -hmm. It's not a texture that I'm falling in love with. Next one. Putting a fillet of beef into a stew, if you stew it for long enough, it will go dry. For me, a white meat's going to work a lot better. But it's got oomph, it's got depth of flavour. You're definitely a deft hand at spicing. Very, very similar to the first dish in that it starts very deep and fruity and then gets as hot as you get towards the end. You do no spices. Andrew is hoping his scallops with chorizo and celeriac puree, followed by sea bass on cabbage with chestnuts, pancetta and coconut milk, will take him through to the quarterfinal. truffle oil, and then chorizo as well. It's leaving the scallop with very little room. I think I am a bit guilty of trying to be chefy rather than just doing what's right. Oh, I don't think you're being chefy enough. Fair play. Soft scallop, mushy chorizo, mushy puree. Sorry, I don't really like it at all. OK. We'll say goodbye to the scallops, and we'll bring in your sea bass. It's, it's confused. You get iron of cabbage, smokiness of bacon, and sweetness of coconut. It's too much. Is it? OK. It's, it's, it's too much. Fried fish screams out for acid, lemon juice, vinegar. Instead, what you've got is you've got sweet chestnuts. It doesn't deliver. It seemed to me like it might just work. I'll take, I'll take your word for it, for it that it doesn't. Mitra is looking to impress with grilled sea bass, gnocchi and broad bean salad, followed by white chocolate syllabub and chocolate biscuits. Broad bean and pea, really sweet, really yummy. And that gnocchi is beautifully made, very, very soft. All of it together and the sea bass gets slightly, slightly lost. Mm -hmm. Each component part is done very, very well. It isn't working as a single dish. Let's bring in your syllabub. Clever use of spicing, that like cardamom. Creamy and then the cocoa of the biscuit. But it needs another dimension. Just something just to give it a little bit of sharpness. But the actual syllabub by itself, really tasty, well done. I'm actually fairly impressed with what you've done at this round, but you've got to get your confidence. 
getting quite emotional for no reason. This is rubbish. Because it means something, doesn't it? Yes. Um, yes. You know what happens now? John and I have a lot of talking to do. Off you go. Master Chef, and we know what we're looking for. We're looking for a great amateur who can make it as a professional. I'm really, really disappointed in Andrew because he was the first name on our list yesterday. We just had a watery, lumpy, celeriac puree. And what was going on with the fish? That was just awful. Maybe I should have just played that one safe and gone, gone for something slightly more traditional. It's still repeating on me. It's just not nice. Sweet, flabby, ugh. Andrew's gone then. That leaves us with Lucy and Mitra. Lucy did deliver the two best dishes today. A salad of prawns and squid, mango and pomegranate. It was a coherent dish. Move on to her curry. Good concept. OK, the fillet of beef, it didn't follow through. The girl didn't understand that the fillet steak would dry out. She just thought it would cook quicker. I wanted to get something tender, but in the end it wasn't tender anyway. <laughs> but there is the basis of somebody who understands flavour. But I believe Mitra is a better cook. Gone. Mitra had a sea bass that was well cooked. She also made very, very good gnocchi. I thought I was going to get complete slagging from my main course. Like, I was just looking at it going, what have I just cooked? And then you look at her pudding, clever use of cardamom, and then she's gone on and made biscuits. Mitra obviously cooks quite a lot. That's obvious. But her dish was confused with a piece of sea bass with that gnocchi. Go on to dessert. Again, the conception wasn't right because it didn't deliver on the flavour. My worry for Lucy is that that type of cooking is all she does. Fruity base going on to highly spiced, I thought was great, but it occurred twice. Which one of these two has the potential to stand up in a quarterfinal and give people a really good fight for their money? Well done. Well done. It's a tough couple of days. We have one quarterfinal place. Our quarterfinalist. It's Mitra. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. I tried my hardest and it's just not not to be, I guess. But I'll just go home and keep on cooking. I'm happy with what I've done, to be honest. This is definitely the start of my cooking career. I just had no idea I'd get this far, and now it'll just make me more determined. It's been brilliant. Mitra will be back for the quarter-final, where she'll face three other exceptional cooks.